Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing a very highly requested video. How to learn Japanese or how to be fluent in Japanese or um, Japanese 101, Japanese language 101, I don't know. I get a lot of questions asking about how I'm able to pick up the language so quickly. I was only there for like uh, a year and I had no prior knowledge to for a little bit. So today I'll be telling you guys my secrets. When I was in Japan and these helped me so much. So today I thought I'd share with you guys some of my tips. I will also be answering some of your questions on Snapchat because I asked you guys on Snapchat to ask me any questions about Japanese. I will answer them at the end of this video or I will make a part 2 if this video gets too long. Um, before I start, I just want to talk a little bit about my experience with the language. I started exposing myself to the culture and the language when I was really really young. My brothers and I, we grew up watching Naruto. I did watch them with English subtitles when I was younger. And so because of that, um, I've always known what the language sounds like. And I could, at a very very young age, speak very basic Japanese. Stuff like, Konnichiwa o genki desu ka? Itterashai, itadakimasu. These are very very basic phrases that that you would naturally pick up when you watch a lot of Japanese dramas or Japanese animations. It is a great way to expose yourself to the language if you are new to the language but there's only so much that you can learn from watching anime. Honestly speaking it really doesn't help that much at all. Before I went on exchange to Japan I actually tried to sit down and study actually study Japanese and I studied Japanese by myself on and off for about two years and let me just say it was 80% more effective than watching 10 years of anime. So today I'll be telling you guys five steps to being conversationally decent or fluent in Japanese. So before I move on to the steps, I just uh, thought maybe you guys would want to hear me speaking a little bit of Japanese first. So just to show you guys what I sound like speaking Japanese, I'm just gonna talk a little. Huh? Dewa minasan. Konnichiwa. Yo desu. Mina tabun shitteru to omo kedo. Mana. えっとね、今の私は日本語全然大丈夫だけど、最初はちょっとやばいですよ。なんかさ、日本初めて来た時は去年かな。そう、去年だ。なんかさ、やばいよ。何にも喋れないし、何も置かないし、もうやばい本当
I've seen it happen so many times, so please don't ever use romaji. It's not good. Yeah, I, I've seen people saying Watashi no namae wa na, namae wa Sarah desu. No, no, no. See, that's what happens when you read straight off from romaji. When you read straight from hiragana, it's gonna be like Hajime mashite. Watashi no namae wa Sarah desu. So just trust me and do not study from romaji. It goes straight to hiragana and katakana. Which brings me on to step number two. Learn hiragana and katakana. Please don't go telling me that it is too difficult to learn because it is not hard. It is not hard to learn hiragana and katakana. It can all be done in one day. Yes, I said it. It is completely doable to master hiragana and katakana within one day. You don't have to do it within one day, but I'm just telling you that it is completely, completely doable. And if you don't know the difference between hiragana and katakana, they are basically the same in the sense that they all sound the same, but they are written differently. Now, hiragana is used mainly for sounding out Japanese words like Hai gozaimasu, hajimimashite, gochiso sama deshita, toka toka um, And katakana is used for spelling out foreign words like Disney, cake or coffee And a really really easy way to tell the difference between hiragana and katakana is Hiragana is written with really soft, flowy lines and katakana is written in really sharp, angular lines like this one. Now, the best way to learn it is through practice. So, have a notebook ready. A lot of people like to learn hiragana first and then katakana. But, if you are lazy like me and you want to get things done faster at a faster pace, do it at the same time, okay? The blue is katakana and the red is hiragana. This is not the full table, but I'm just showing you guys how to do it. You are going to write one set of hiragana at the top, a i u e o, and you are going to repeat that in the katakana form. So, a i u e o, I find that listing it this way makes the whole learning a lot faster. You can learn both hiragana and katakana at the same time, and it is just so much faster than learning just hiragana first. Do not learn everything at once, or learn one set. And by one set, I mean a i u e o. Oh, that is one set. Ka ki ku ke ko is another set. So study one set at a time. After each set, flip to a blank page and test yourself. So I always recommend people to do uh, mini mini tests like this all the time because it really really helps with your memorization. Once you're done with this, try speaking and writing at the same time. A i u e o, and then I want you guys to write it down. A i u e o. After that, it goes to kaki ku ke ko. So I want you guys to just practice that. Ka ki ku ke ko. And just keep practicing that. Once you get that, try practicing writing words like imasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. You don't have to write kanji, but yes, I'm just writing it for you guys. O namae wa nan desu ka? Alright, so you can. I know my handwriting is really messy, but this is not my usual handwriting, but I'm just showing you guys that this is a really, really good way to practice. So, yeah, I always recommend you guys to try to write words with it. You can even write your favorite anime names. Like, you can write One Piece in katakana, or you can write Kuroko no Basuke in katakana. It's up to you. Finally, try to train yourself to read faster by using flashcards or by playing this game. This is gonna help you to read a lot quicker. So just take a pen and just point to random characters and say it out loud. Just go as quick as you can and try to hit as many characters as you can. If you do everything that I said um, for 30 minutes every single day for at least one week, you will be shocked by how much you will improve. Alright, step three. Learn the basic sentence structures. This will be easy if you speak Korean. Now, if English is the only language that you speak, you might have to work a little bit harder. So I'm not going to teach you everything. Here is just one example. In Japanese, we say gohan tabetai desu. So gohan is rice. And the word tabe comes from the word taberu, which means to eat. And the word tai comes from the word shitai, which means want or I want. So I want to eat is tabetai. Simple enough. So gohan tabetai is I want to eat rice. In Japanese language, you put the subject first, which is in this case the rice, and then you put the action later. So subject comes first and then the action. You can switch around with many many different types of words like kareshi, hoshi, boyfriend, I want. 
I wish. So I wish to have a boyfriend. Kaimono shitai. Um, shopping, I want. So I want to go shopping. So you can change this up a lot. But um, this is the basic structure of it. So you have to learn and get used to the sentence structures first before you move on to the next step. Do not rush learning kanji, alright? Kanji is basically Chinese characters. Kanji isn't something that you can just learn like that. In order to remember the kanji for life, you have to keep practicing it for years. Now, if you speak Chinese, you probably already know more kanji than Japanese people. For those of you who don't know, kanji is used very differently in Chinese and in Japanese. In Chinese, it is their only writing system, which means that every single word that you use to write in a sentence is a kanji. For example, 你是谁? As you can see, everything is in kanji. But in Japanese, the kanji is used mainly to give a word um, its identity. For example, the word hana can have multiple meanings because there are multiple Japanese words with the same sound. If I were to replace the hiragana hana with the kanji hana, people will immediately know that I'm talking about a flower. And if I were to replace hana with hana, people will know that I'm talking about a nose or someone's nose or my nose. The way to learn kanji is to memorize its meanings and write it down several times and just keep practicing until you get it. Here comes um, the slightly confusing part. So in Japanese, every kanji character has at least two sounds or two readings, two way of reading. Unlike Chinese characters because most Chinese characters usually only have one sound. But in Japanese, you have the onyumi, which is the sound that you get reading off of the Chinese character. And you have kunyomi, which is the sound reading off the actual meaning of the word in Japanese. I know it's a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna give you an example, alright? Let's take a look at one of the most simplest kanji, alright? Kokoro. So this is the kanji for heart. So this is the kanji for heart. And in Chinese, it is read as sing. So some of you guys might ask, when do you use onyumi and when do you use kunyomi? Well, that depends on where the kanji is placed. If a kanji is placed beside a hiragana or a katakana, you will read it in the kunyomi. So you will read it in the Japanese way. For example, I'll give you a sentence like, Watashi no kokoro wa anata no mono desu. Which basically means my heart is yours, alright? So I have the sentence right here. So as you can see right now, the kanji that we are looking at is beside a hiragana. So that means you will read it in the kunyomi, which is the Japanese version of it. So you will read it as kokoro. So instead of saying, Watashi no shin wa anata no mono desu, you will read it as, Watashi no kokoro wa anata no mono desu. But if the kanji is placed beside another kanji, you will read it in its onyumi form. For example, this word right here. As you can see, the kanji that we were looking at is now beside another kanji. And this time, this is pronounced as Shinzo, which basically means heart. And in Chinese, this is pronounced as Xinzang. In Korean, it is pronounced as Shinjang. It sounds very similar, I know, it's crazy. That's why it is really, really easy for people who speak Korean and Chinese to learn Japanese as well. It's, it's connected, alright? Hopefully you guys get it because I know this might be really, really confusing to some of you guys. So I'm gonna stop it here. If you guys want a separate video just talking about kanji, Tell me in the comment section below, alright? So the final step is to actually use origana to aid in your kanji learning process. This is probably the most effective one that actually worked for me. It's basically using hiragana and katakana to help you pronounce your kanji. This, for example, I don't know how to pronounce this kanji. I will search it up and I will write down the furigana right beside the kanji. And that's gonna help me remember what the kanji sounds like. Do not use romaji. Like I said before, never ever 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 use romaji. So this is something that I really really highly recommend everyone to do. The first step is to actually get a Japanese novel. You can get any type of novel you want. Preferably you should get something that doesn't already have furigana. So you can, you know, add furigana in yourself. And also get something that that is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more difficult. So it'll be more of a challenge for you. And no, no manga please. I'm talking about novels. So novels like these, just words, all right? Words like that. This was something that I did when I was in Japan and it has helped me so much. The one that I used when I was back in Japan was a novel called Nagai Kuzushita no Pipi, which means Pipi, the girl with long stockings. It is an amazing book. So that book was very challenging for me because I, I back then I couldn't read Japanese at all. Even if I could 
read it, I didn't know what it meant. So this is what I did, all right? I opened the page, page one, sentence number one, and I will read it. And if I don't understand it, I will not move on. I will not move on to the second sentence until I fully comprehend what the first sentence means. I will just keep doing that for the entire book to make sure that I actually understand every single part of the story. That is actually very slow, so it took me quite a while to actually finish the entire book. What I want you to do is start reading the book, and when you come across something that you don't know, do not skip it just because you don't get it. Go and search it up and write down the Frigana and also write down the meaning. And just keep doing that for every single sentence. And every day before you start on a new page, go back to the first page and reread everything again and again and again and again. And that's what's going to help you to learn because it keeps everything fresh in your mind. And that's actually also going to help you to remember to actually use these words in real life because you actually remember them now. It is really, really effective. I have learned so many words from this words that I actually use. It's a really really good way to widen your vocabulary and you can do it for so many different types of books as well and it's not boring because as you continue you actually understand more and more of the story and it gets more and more interesting so that's what's gonna keep you going. Now, it worked for me I'm pretty sure it will work for you too. You just have to keep at it if you don't want to uh, get a private tutor if you don't have money for that this is such a good way and it works in such a short amount of time as well so yeah try it and tell me what you guys think. That is all for this video I think I will have a part two to this video which is going to be me answering your questions on snapchat which is crazy you guys sent in a lot of questions so I will end this video here thank you guys so much for watching if you guys like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video bye